Welcome to Awards Bait, the official Galaxy of Film Award Show podcast where we ask ourselves, what's getting nominated this year? Joining me every other Tuesday is a roster of guest stars to help me answer that very question. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Awards Baits. This is our first episode, and I am super pumped to be joined by the one, the only, Mr. David Rosen. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I, I We've been on a couple of recordings over on the main show together. Mm-hmm. I think we did like, what did we do together? Like Spencer? Were you on the Spencer one? I think I was on that uh, one with you. Maybe uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I've been on that show like a few times. Yeah. I know like... It's it's a lot of a lot of movies, a lot of movies yeah. to talk about. So it kind of all you know. Once once we get like a few months removed, it's like, what, what was it that movie? I think it might mm-hmm. have been that movie. But, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It all blends together after a while. Um, but yeah, we've we've crossed paths a few times, and uh, sure. I mean, yeah. I I thought who better to to have on this pilot here other than the the guy? You know, <laughs> he's 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 got hey. piecing it together. He's got music. I'm amazed by this man's time management. It's incredible. And he still manages to squeeze in a bunch of movies here and there. Um, time management, what's that? I know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, the, the way today's show is going to go is just some festival news. For those of you joining us, some festival news, uh, some rundown of like just what award season means to us, as well as the strike. We got to address the strike. Sure. And um yeah, it's just going to be kind of a fun, chill vibe. And yeah, we I mean, we've got the, the way the show is going to go. I kind of did a little bit of an intro over on the YouTube channel. The video at the time of this recording is not out yet, but um, it should be by the time this episode is uploaded. Um, it's just going to get the uninitiated initiated. That's kind of my goal here is to sort of raise awareness for some of these award films. I feel like a lot of them kind of tend to go under the radar at times, um, especially like ones that miss the awards race. Like I also just want to shine a spotlight on some of the smaller films that are coming out. I think that's a lot of fun to do, even if there is no awards prospect. Um, sure. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Uh, David, do you feel like, because I mentioned it in the yet to be released announcement video, um, but I sort of made a joke about like, oh man, Dune got delayed. Why are we even bothering with this show? Um, do you think that the strike is done with the delays? Like, do you think we're still going to see some of these movies that we're going to talk about today shift and move down to get that actor promo? Or do you think we're kind of done with that? I think it's a really strange timing right now because there's rumors that they're finally going to be getting together to talk a little bit more about getting to some kind of resolution like today at the time of recording. So, I mean, it really remains to be seen. I really think anything's possible. I really do think that we could see more delays still. I mean, I hate to be a pessimist, but as you know, you said, I also compose music. So, you know, I work on film and that uh, you know, c- capacity. Uh, I I don't feel hopeful about a- an agreement coming about. And so I don't know how that is going to uh, affect, con- you know, continued delays. And then if they can't com- campaign on these films, I don't know how that's going to affect things. So it is a really strange time. But at the same time, it it feels like they've settled on some of these release dates. And it feels like you know, what's coming out is what's coming out now and is the major, uh, you know, contenders right now. So, yeah, it's so hard to say. And I I, I hope so. I hope that what, what we're going to talk about here are the movies that will be out and all these actors and filmmakers will be able to uh, promote these things. But it, it's it's a really strange time. I agree, man. I think I think as far as the the films that have been uh at festivals and things, I think those are pretty much locked in. Um, mm-hmm. But but no, yeah. When it comes to like, I, I've I've noticed this, and I've, I say this every year with the awards season. Um, so many streaming movies are coming and entering this awards race, and so Netflix and now Apple and sometimes Amazon kind of dominate a lot of the categories. So I feel like with the streaming release, they're not worried about box office. Those will just stick, I feel like. I feel like those will just come out. So you'll get 
um, you'll get the killer. You'll get Hitman, which is a topic I have here to discuss. You'll get Hitman. You'll get and you'll get Napoleon on Apple. I feel like you'll get Killers of the Flower Moon. Like these are all movies that are going to come out because there is a streaming component to them. Um, you know, whether that's I, I obviously you want to see all these films in a theater, um, and it sure. sucks that like Netflix really kind of doesn't do that. Um, I mean, you, you, yeah. like I love Napoleon and uh killers of the flower moon seem to get be getting the wide release which is awesome um so yeah. we'll definitely see those in theaters but yeah like the killer you're not seeing that in a theater unless you like drive two hours or something um right. so yeah i mean with that we can kind of segue right into some of the festival news here hitman which did not have a distributor up until like two days ago has been sold to netflix sold million dollars so huge deal um that's that's great for them. Um, so I, mm. I, I heard the movie's great. So I'm super pumped to watch it. What do you think about it being sold to Netflix? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very mixed on this. Uh, you know, every single early review out of uh, TIFF mentioned how great of like a crowd movie this is. This is the movie to watch with an audience. It is so much fun. And, you know, granted, we haven't seen the movie. You know, who knows? They might, you know you know uh festival itis you know where where they like just love everything but mm -hmm. uh it might not be that good but i'm hopeful that it's good i really like glenn powell and of course i love richard linkletter and i would love for this to be great it's just not going to be the same at home you know with my cats on the couch and i really wanted to see this in the theater so i'm bummed about that but i'm glad he got 20 million dollars out of it um i mean he didn't get but you know everyone involved yeah. um yeah, it, it, it's it's a tough one. And yeah, many people will get to see it this way. So that's good. But uh, yeah, I really hope that they have some theatrical component and maybe it'll open here. I don't know. Yeah, man, I, I agree with you. I was this is one of the ones I was trying to see over at uh, the New York Film Festival, because uh, that's coming up here mm. in about like at the time of this episode dropping in like three days. So that'll be that'll be a big one there. And that's totally like every ticket is on standby. So there's no way to get in there. Um, I bet. So that sucks. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I feel like the, my, my local chain that I used to have that I've been bought out completely by AMC, but they would play the Netflix movies. So I got to go see Glass mm. Onion in the theater. I got to go see um, uh, Zack Snyder's zombie movie in the theater. I got to see that in theaters. I like there was a bunch of Netflix films that I was able to go and see in theaters because they somehow played them all so it that's kind of the one thing that i don't like about that chain being gone is that they won't play the netflix yeah. movies anymore um but i mean i could i think there's like one in like an hour and a half away from me so maybe i'll take that drive for for the killer and for hitman um but no it's a big deal and it's similar to the deal that was made for i believe the movie's called fair play uh with alden ehrenreich that that was another 20 million dollar yeah. netflix deal from like sundance i believe i saw that i i was able to see that movie that was really great um and i hope it gets that same the same eyes on it that it probably wouldn't otherwise you know i i, I hope it's a bigger hit right. because it's on netflix like you were kind of alluding to um just because you know you're on your couch and you could just hit the button but um I don't know. I really hope it plays well and I hope it does well on Netflix. Um, but I don't, I, I hope it doesn't kill its awards chances. I hope it's still a big player. Um, and we'll see in the coming yeah, weeks. Yeah. I, that... I think awards chances could still be on the table, but I yeah. think the thing that it really hurts is, um, you know, people talked about, you know, ever since Top Gun Maverick, like Glenn Powell, could be like the next big star. He could have like a star power involved and, Netflix movies don't really make stars. And yeah. if this movie isn't in the public consciousness in the way theatrical releases do, it's just going to be another movie. And that is kind of a bummer. And so I, yeah, I, I really hope it finds its way to some theaters. Yeah. The, the Netflix model, it's, it's, it's a way to shine bright, but it's a way to really burn out quick. So I feel like this could yes. easily leave the, the minds very fast if that's the case so i hope not but we'll see um i i mean but and, and he produced this i believe too right he like yes, he's very yeah. involved in the in the film making side of this and did they get announce a release date i didn't see one when i was looking at it but not yet probably. that i haven't seen no no okay yeah. so not yet um but yeah no hitman it'll be on netflix at some point check it out if you wouldn't have otherwise 
Um, but yeah, so it'll be on there free with your subscription. Uh, next topic I have here is American Fiction. Now, this is a film that I hadn't even heard of until very recently. This won the top prize at TIFF. Um, the Holdovers and The Boy and the Heron uh, scored second and third. So American Fiction uh, stars Jeffrey Wright. That's about all I know about it. But this kind of nowhere for me. Um, and the one thing, if history has taught us anything, and I've kind of looked into this, every single People's Choice winner at TIFF in the last, I want to say, ever since 2008, with the exception of one year, have gone on to be nominated for Best Picture. So American hmm. Fiction yeah. is probably our pretty much the best guaranteed lock for a best picture nomination that we have at the moment. Have you ever heard of this movie? Are you going to check it out now that it won the top prize over at TIFF? So I also don't know much about it. The main yeah. thing I knew about it is that Jeffrey Wright is amazing in it and is, you know, a pretty much a lock, you know, for a, uh, a nomination for him, at least. Uh, as far as the rest of the film, though, I'm, you know, very excited to hear more about it and to find out when we're going to get to see this because it sounds great. Yeah, totally. And and to see that so many people responded to it at TIFF, I think is super encouraging. And The Holdovers was another one that was on my radar. I thought that would oh, surely yeah. win uh, the best, the, the, the audience prize there because that looks great and I'm super pumped for that. And that's that's one that we'll talk about pretty soon here. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that one kind of came out of nowhere. So definitely look forward to that one. I don't think that one's even been announced for a release date. That's, it just kind of totally popped up out of nowhere for me. I've never even heard of this until. Yeah, days ago. absolutely. It's, it's also a first time uh, filmmaker. So uh, oh, nice. it'll be interesting to see a new voice like that. So that, that is awesome. Um, so I, I alluded to earlier, uh, New York Film Festival begins September 29th. So if you've got tickets or if you live in New York and you want to stand on the standby line for a little while, see if you can score some tickets, go for it. Um, I really wish I could go. I, I might still try to sneak in a couple of films here and there. I've gone in years past and I've always had a great time at New York Film Festival. Um, but we've got some some films premiering there. I, I believe May, December is coming out there from Netflix. Um, Priscilla nice. will be there. Ferrari is there. Um, Poor Things has a couple of showings there. And uh, I think I'm getting a hitman I mentioned before. The Boy and the Heron will be there. Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, Zone of Interest. These are all big awards contenders. So uh we'll see we'll see if any other reactions come out from new york film festival i'm super pumped about it um i'm gonna definitely keep an eye out for how people are responding to everything and see what kind of shifts in the general consciousness so we'll see what happens there but uh as far as new york film festival goes do you have any thoughts on that i mean that's a crazy lineup uh, you're getting you're getting all the good ones from all the other festivals so uh yeah i wish i was in new york for that i know i every year for the last like three years, I've been like, I'm going to buy that $250 package where you can just get 10 tickets. Mm -hmm. And every year I miss the deadline. And then I'm like scrambling morning of to be like, Hey, is there any, is there anything left? And then I'm like 13,000th in line. And I'm like, you know what? Not this year. And it's happened a couple of times now. And it's really, it sucks every year. Next year, I just got to remember like 250 and you can go see 10 movies. That's great. That's um, great. That's awesome. And it's like all the main slate films, the spotlight films. It's like, I just need to just bite the bullet next year and do it. Cause it's, they always have great lineup. Like, cause I'm, I'm always like, well, what's even going to be there? And I'm, and then it's always great stuff. So that's a bummer, but yeah, that's, that's it for festival news that I've got here. We hope you're having a good time so far, but bear with us. We'll be right back after these quick messages. Oh, what's up? Oh, what's up? It's it's Yates here, and I played Jason in Galaxy of Films' newest short film, Distinguished. I just wanted to take a sec to interrupt the podcast to let you know that as of July 15th, Distinguished is available right now on the Galaxy of Film website and YouTube channel. Check it out. Don't be a dick with it. Come on. And now, let's get back to the show. I wanted to go over... For, for our first episode here on Awards Bait, I wanted to go over some best picture potentials. Um, so, I mean, we've seen a couple so far already this year. So I wanted to kind of open up the discussion here for some of the films that you think could be nominated, as well as previewing some films that have not yet been released that we think could get there. So 
what has come out that you think could sneak in there? Well, I think it would be silly to discount Barbenheimer. Um, it was such a you know massive thing that both of those movies very well could end up in the running. Um, Barbie being just such an insanely massive hit and Oppenheimer for the kind of movie it is being such an insanely massive hit uh, and both great, both truly deserving. So it would be awesome if they both show up there and in some various uh, categories as well. So I think those are both uh, ones that should be part of the conversation. And then Past Lives is uh, another easy recommendation for, you know, this conversation. Um, I know it came out earlier in the year, so that can sometimes work against a movie. But uh, I, I think people are going to keep kind of rallying around it right up until the end of the year. So I think that that is another one that, you know, really has a chance of still being on the conversation. Um, those are kind of the only ones though that i feel like are sure things as far as like that have already been released in the year there's a few things that i think are kind of maybe on the fringe like uh are you there god it's me margaret mm -hmm. um that that's like kind of a fringe option uh you know i i could hope and pray that they throw in a stunt category and get john wick in there yeah. um you know, so but uh you know i i do think those three though are the main ones though that have been released so far i agree with you those are those are those are big three ones for me as well i definitely think like oppenheimer is like the most definite best picture lock that we have so far um i, I also have barbie mm. in a sure bet category. so i mentioned to you i think before we started recording we have sure bets and then i have another i have an iffy for now and then i have a no chance which the no chance one is very harsh, but uh, for sure bets, I do have Oppenheimer and Barbie. I think they're both getting in. Um, I really think they're kind of, it, the success story there is too good to pass up because a lot of, a lot of like the award season, you think about the narrative as well. Like it's not just, sometimes, it's not always about the movie, whether that's right or wrong, right? Also kind of about the narrative. Like you'll see like, sure. like Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Like last year, like, wasn't my favorite performance in that category. I thought like there were a couple of people in that supporting actress race that were better. The narrative there where it's like Jamie Lee Curtis, she's put in the time, she's, you know, she's the Halloween, she's, she's, she's done so much stuff for cinema. Let's give her the award. And you kind of get behind it. Yeah. You're like, yeah, sure. So I feel like the Oppenheimer and Barbie story just took the world by storm over the summer. Like they, they succeeded where all other big blockbusters kind of failed. And it's like crazy, like to see that, like, these moderately budgeted films like just came out and just took the world by storm. And they're both like super creative, like crazy. Like Barbie is kind of a risk. Like, like when you really like yeah. see that movie, you're like, this movie made $1.5 billion and it's going to go on to be nominated for so many Oscars. Like that's, that's a huge success story that you really don't see a lot anymore. Um, so yeah. I really appreciated that and as, as well as Oppenheimer to three hour every, people talking in rooms movie. And it's like, and it made yeah. 900 and it's, it's the third highest grossing movie of the year. It goes like every blockbuster. It's crazy. Uh, so the success yeah. story there is too good to pass up. I feel like, I feel like to bring those two as a package deal to the Oscars would just be ratings. Like, I feel like they'll do it. Um, absolutely that I think will happen. For, honestly, and I agree with you. I past lives is one of my favorite films of the year so far, and but I have it in iffy for me. I I don't know why. I just think like I'm worried that it's going to get lost in the shuffle. Like you mentioned earlier, it came out early. I'm worried that it might not stick around. I really hope it does, and I'm sure it will. If especially if some of these hopefuls don't click all the way, I'm sure it will. Um, and then I also have this was a hotter uh, contender earlier. But I think as we move on, this is going to slip into no chance category. But for now, I have it as iffy. Across the Spider-Verse, I thought, I think that could go all the way. I mm -hmm. am losing faith more and more as we progress, yeah. especially with like yeah. the boy and the heron doing so well as, as like a Miyazaki film, like Studio Ghibli, like everybody loves that. So that could be your animated best picture nominee if you get one. They don't always get nominated, yeah. but you never know. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. Across the Spider-Verse, one to keep an eye on that we've seen so far, but also wouldn't be surprised if it totally just gets left out, which I'm, you know, it might, but it might also win that best animated feature category. So it's, it's like kind of a, it's like a, it's like not a participation trophy. That's mean, but like, 
It's like a, <laughs> what's the word? I don't know, but it, it's 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 a the nomination and the win in animated feature is is what it needs. It's like, you know, here right, you go. Right. Like there's your there's your trophy. Um, and then they yeah, don't get and it. I I think it will probably win animated. Like I think I that that's a pretty safe bet, and I think it could get a, a score nomination, maybe visual effects. Yeah. Like there there are other things it could get, but yeah, I think best picture probably a long shot, but I guess you never know. Agreed. Yeah. So as far as that's everything we've got for has been released so far. I I mean I would love to see like smaller movies get in there, but like there's just like and like you said, John Wick four such a great great time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, as far as like the, when you look at it and you're like, this is an awards package, I think we've nailed the three. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I'm, as far as like what's coming out, do you have anything on your radar that you think can get in that, that best picture race? So I have three that I think are absolute safe bets. Um, mm -hmm. cause there's a lot, we've already talked about some of the stuff that is yeah. probably going to be in the conversation. Uh, but the three that we didn't really talk about much that are definite, uh, poor things, the new Yorgos Lanthimos film that's getting all kinds of raves and Emma Stone is probably also going to be nominated, uh, for actress, Mark Ruffalo, probably in there for supporting actor. Totally. Um, I love Yorgos Lanthimos and I can't wait for this movie. It's going to be so weird and, uh, I'm so excited for it. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, because of course you can't ever, uh, you know, bet against Scorsese ending up there and, uh, uh, Lily Gladstone, of course, is the big story out of that. Uh, she just announced she's going for Best Actress instead of Supporting Actress, which is going to be a tougher race. But at the same time, from everything that I've heard so far, it sounds like it's a real uh, possibility there that she could get it. Um, and then Maestro, Bradley Cooper's Leonard Bernstein film, uh, A Star is Born, was just amazing. And I still think Bradley Cooper was robbed in 2018. Uh, I think that this for picture for him as an actor, uh, possibly some other things could end up in the running uh, with this film. I think that this looks awesome and um, I just can't wait to see what he's doing after a star is born because like I said, that movie is, I, that kind of came out of nowhere. Like I've always loved Bradley Cooper for years and years, but I just did not expect that out of him, out of him. And uh, this seems like he's just stepping it up even further. For sure. I, I totally agree with you. And Maestro is the other one that is at New York. That's the one I was missing. So that's nuts. Just nice. another another one there. Uh, so here's what I've got. Uh, so for sure, bets we mentioned it, Oppenheimer. Um, I really do think the holdovers is going to be in there. Um, Anatomy of a Fall, uh, that won the Palm mm -hmm. d'Or over at Cannes. I think that should sneak in. Um, given, I, I think they, because here's the thing with the Oscars is, is they'll normally do... Um, it's eight to 10, I believe, for best picture. They don't always use all 10. So I could totally see right. Anatomy of a Fall being like the 10th. And it's like, oh, they only got nine or something, you know? So you never know. Um, I do think American Fiction sneaks in after that. Just shocker there. Uh, Poor Things, that is like the movie that like everybody loved. So I feel like there's no way that doesn't get in. Um, mm -hmm. Especially like you were especially Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone race. That's going to be like crazy like i think like yeah i am so excited to see how that shakes out especially because like I've, i'm hearing emma stone is like gives the like performance of her career in that movie and like lily gladstone like we were mentioning earlier with the narrative like it's like she, that movie i read the book for killers of the flower moon and it's like that the story there i feel like is so like powerful for that performance like i feel like it, it's gonna have a lot of like oscar clips you know what i mean like i feel yeah, like yeah. that'll have so many moments of like Lily Gladstone just acting her heart out. And like, I feel like she's going to kill that. So I feel like that's another one where it's like, oh, where are they going to go? Like, it's really a coin toss. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, right after Poor Things there. And then Barbie. Those are my sure bets. Um, mm -hmm. You're convincing me with Bastro, though, to bump that up. I really do think that should definitely get in there. Uh, Iffy for now, I have May December, which is a uh, film from Todd Haynes. He directed Carol, which got into yeah. Best Picture. Um haven't heard a lot about it, uh, so we'll see what happens after that opening night in New York Film Festival. Maybe we'll get some buzz there. Uh, but for now, I'm not sold, but I do think there is potential there. Uh, the Color Purple, again, another one that I'm not even sure will come out this year. Like, I, that, that's another one where I'm like, you know, it's Warner Brothers. They might delay it. You never know. Sure. Yeah. Especially with, like, the bottleneck in December that they have there. I, it's so weird how they have, like, Wonka 
Aquaman and Color Purple like coming out within like five days of each other or something ridiculous like yeah, that. It's like, why yeah. are you releasing all three of these films like so close together? Uh, so that's weird. I feel like that's one where it's like, I haven't heard a lot of buzz on it either. Like that could just not come out. I don't know. Uh, I had Maestro there. I do think I, the nose thing was kind of like pushing me. I was like, I don't know if this is going to survive, but it looks like it is. And I feel like a lot, like, like, I feel like a lot of people have kind of like thrown that aside where it's like, okay, like, I feel like this is silly. Like, I feel like, I feel like it might just be one of those quick things where it's like, we saw the picture and it's like, oh my God. And then, and then, you know, they get it was a it. Twitter thing for a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, yeah. you know, Bernstein's family even came out and said it was ridiculous. So, yeah. You so, know. Yeah, I think maybe that'll. I, I think Maestro's getting in. I think Maestro's getting in. Um, I honestly, this was one of my most anticipated for the entire season, but the reviews have just not been good. Saltburn, Emerald Fennel's mm. new film. Yeah. Really thought that was going to go all the way after Promising Young Woman. It still looks great. I'm still super pumped to see it, but the just the mixed results. I'm like, I don't know about this one. Uh, but you know, I mean, Joker ended up with some more mixed results than we thought, and that kind of went all the way so we'll see yeah. um like i mentioned past lives and across the spider verse i just think the earliness of those two not sure uh and then i have i i've been hearing a lot of like really 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 great buzz about this film but i feel like this could be another like it's really great but it just for whatever reason goes unseen and that's uh all of us strangers it stars uh paul mescal and mm. i think it could get in there but again I'm not totally sure. Um, I don't know about that one. I haven't heard anything about it. I heard it's great. It's got like a 98 on like Metacritic and stuff. Like it's one of the highest reviewed films of the year, uh, right up there with Past Lives. So I feel like it could get in there, but I just feel like it's one of those things. Like like uh, like After Sun, right? Like After Sun, right? Great. Everybody loved it, but it just did. But it didn't go anywhere. Right. Um, so it could be one of those where it's just too small and doesn't really get enough noise. And then I have the No Chance category, which I feel bad about. But, and I think these movies look great and I'm super pumped to see them, but I just feel like the, like we were mentioning the narrative, I feel like the buzz immediately was not strong enough and I feel like it might not go all the way. Mm. I have the killer in there. I'm super pumped to see it. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like something, uh, I feel like it's not clicking the way it should. I feel like David Fincher and Michael Fassbender don't care either. No. Like <laughs> they don't care one bit whether it gets Oscar nominations. No. Uh, so yeah. It Still looks can't good, wait though. to see it though. Yeah, me too. I yeah. agree with you. Um, another big one. Nobody's talking about this movie. Uh, Taika Waititi's next goal wins. I, I yeah, what happened yeah. to Taika? I don't know what happened to him. He like just I Thor guess love, happened to Taika. Yeah, that's what love happened. and thunder. That's that's that just killed him, huh? Like I feel like it really did. Another fastbender too, where it's like I mean, and you know, like we just, you know, yeah. So it's like whatever. But I don't know. I just feel like it's such a it, it got it, that looks like movies where it's like you know what this is gonna be like a feel good like just sure bet that just sneaks in there and it just captures the hearts of everybody and it just uh, it, it might still and it might earn some money but. As far as awards go, I don't, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, I also, yeah. I, I'm not totally sold on this one. I haven't heard enough like mixed things about it yet, but I feel like Ferrari might not get all the way, but it looks good. I, that's another one I'm super pumped for. All these movies I'm really excited for, um, but I just, yeah. you know, you can only have 10. Um, so I got Ferrari in there. I've also got Priscilla. I feel like Priscilla is going to be another Spencer where it's like maybe some costume design, sure. maybe a lead actress, but we, I feel like it ultimately doesn't go anywhere. Um, and then I also have Napoleon. Uh, I haven't really heard a lot about this. I just saw the trailer for the first time last night in theaters and it looks good. It looks really good. Um, but I just feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's not really getting enough buzz. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. Ridley Scott's films, they could go either way. Like, yeah. I'm very excited for it, but sometimes they come and go and are just completely ignored, like The Last yeah. Duel. And then sometimes they get all the buzz in the world. So it's like, you just never know with his movies. Exactly. I mean, but listen to all those. We, look, we got like, we got Alexander Payne in there. We got Yorgos Lanthimos. We got Lawrence Scorsese. We got Greta Gerwig, Nolan, Taika Waititi, David Fincher, Michael Mann. Like, this is a this is a really good year, man. Like, I, I think this is, yeah, I'm pumped. Like we're eating good. Um, so I mean, Absolutely. that's, and you know what, can I throw one more in there? Yeah, actually? Do it. Although, 
Uh, unfortunately, it's in the no chance uh, category only because Jeff Nichols is always overlooked. But the yeah. bike riders, uh, it looks so fantastic. A great cast. Austin Butler is getting a ton of praise for this one. Um, but yeah, I don't know why Jeff Nichols always gets overlooked by the Academy. So it probably yeah. will get completely overlooked. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I actually, I f forgot about that one until you just said it. No, that was another one though, that I like saw the trailer and I'm like, looks good. Just, but yeah. totally no chance, but I mean, but I'm excited about it. Like I'm excited about all these. Um, but I mean, that's, that's a little bit of an overview for best over. I mean, as the, as the show progresses, we will get more of like a finalized look, especially as we actually start to see these films. Um, mm. but for now, I think that about does it for the first episode of Awards Bait. David, it's been fantastic talking to you. Uh, where can the people find you? I, plug away, please. <laughs> yeah, people can find me uh, on all the social medias at Piecing Pod. You can find Piecing It Together wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, my music you can find at ByDavidRosen.com, also at ByDavidRosen on all the socials. I'm about to put out a new film score uh, called Blind Malice. It's a, a horror film that I scored earlier this year and uh, the score putting it out, you know, in time for the Halloween season. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff to go check out. And thank you again for having me on the show. Absolutely, man. This has been such a great time. And I hope we and I put you guys on to some films that you maybe didn't hear of before. So, I mean, it's we're just getting started with award season here. Really hope you guys will join me as we progress throughout the award season. We've got a ton of great guests lined up. Um, huge thanks to David. Huge thanks to Galaxy of Film for allowing me to continue on with the show. And uh, I hope you guys will join me every other Tuesday for the show. And you can find me at Jakey Lemon on Instagram, as well as just the broader Galaxy of Film brand at Galaxy of Film on all social media platforms. You can listen to the main show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time. And that's it. Have a good day. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. <laughs>